Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the combat system in Code Vein and as we know Code Vein is a Souls-like game so there's no need for me to talk about the obvious stuff. We are instead going to talk about things that are very specific to Code Vein and that you probably didn't know. Now, I am very convinced that many people found this game to be sometimes a little bit too complicated and probably they didn't bother trying to understand some of the systems that were implemented in the game such as the class system and the gift system, the, so the abilities. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure many people didn't bother too much time with that and probably because at first it seemed to be way too complicated. but being a Souls-like game, you need to take time to get comfortable with the game, meaning that you have to adjust it to what you like and to, you know, your play style. And it's totally possible in this game and you will see that the learning curve is very simple. So I'm going to explain all of it in this video in depth actually. So it might take some time, but at the end of the day, you will see that in the execution, everything is very simple so first of all we are starting with the controls obviously you have your light attacks your heavy attacks dodge roll block parry then your drain attacks which is a very unique move to this game now there are a few more things that you need to know first of all you can actually animation cancel you can cancel animations in code vein by blocking you can also do so by rolling but it will most likely mess up your timing and consume stamina. You can also get hit in mid roll depending on your mobility. If you have slow or normal mobility, you will tend to get hit mid roll. Meanwhile, if you have a high mobility, then you know you can use the Bloodborne dash to avoid everything because the iframes are a lot more generous in that dodge. Still, I wouldn't recommend rolling, rolling or dodging. Uh, to cancel an animation. It's better to block because it doesn't consume stamina, it keeps you in position and it's very good for backstab fishing which I do a lot in my videos because backstab can sometimes be hard to land depending on the enemy and how they position. Blocking is also a lifesaver after using a drain attack or missing a parry because it cuts off the recovery frames. Same thing after casting a spell. There is also a trick with a weapon called the Sunset Halberd. Pressing square once with that weapon causes a double hit, meaning that your character will get stuck in the animation of your first light attack. But if you block right after the first hit, you can cancel the second hit and allowing you to spam only the first attack, which is pretty fast and it turns this weapon into a very fast weapon. Now, I do not know if that was intentional but hey you know what to say if it's not broken don't fix it because it actually feels good unfortunately the only animation that cannot be cancelled apparently is the healing animation all right next we have some other types of attacks like the special attack which can be executed by pressing r1 and square every weapon has a special attack and that type of attack actually has a knockdown potential and deal a pretty good amount of damage in one hit not as much as a charged heavy attack but still a good amount there's also the launch attack which can be executed by pressing r1 and triangle launch attacks do not do anything useful unless you are in the focus state during the focus state it will launch enemies in the air and cause your character to follow up with a drain attack which gives you some high frames as well all right next you have the combo drain which can be executed by pressing r1 and x after any melee attack that is not a gift combo drains the combo drain is a very good move if you quickly need icor and deal some nice damage as well however there are some issues with that move the combo drain uses a crap ton of stamina and also has some really bad recovery frames you can cancel those by blocking as well but because the recovery frames are naturally very long, you might not be able to take control of your character in time and if there are more enemies around you, then you might get hit. In addition to that, drain attacks don't always knock down enemies. So it can be pretty bad because 
depending on the blood veil drain attacks can be sometimes very slow so while it deals damage and gives you i core i think it's too punishable of a move due to its inconsistent speed slow recovery stamina consumption and the fact that it doesn't always knock down the enemies honestly if the recovery frame was at least a bit faster than that I think it would be a more reliable move. Same thing with the charge drain attacks as well. Alright now let's talk about the focus state because I know that there are some people who got confused with that system. So the focus state is represented by this little gauge above your stamina. It will fill up whenever you dodge attacks or get hit. Now these are the explanations they would give you but they are not very clear in my opinion. When they say dodge, it is actually perfect dodge. And also what they do not tell you is that blocking counts as getting hit. When the gauge is full, you enter focus state. When you enter focus, your stamina refills automatically back up to full. Your character resists stagger more efficiently and it also makes it easier for you to stagger enemies. And like I said before, it makes your launch attack more useful. Now. During the focus, your gauge will slowly decrease back down to zero and if you get hit, you lose more focus in the process. From my experience, I would tell you that slow mobility builds will highly benefit from this system because when your mobility is slow, your dodge roll has way less iframes and because of that, you are forced to perform more precise dodge rolls which will inevitably lead you to perform perfect dodges. Also, you generally get slow mobility from heavy weapons from heavy weapon types like the great sword or the hammer slash axes. These two weapon types have the highest defense stats in the game, meaning that blocking with both of these weapons will be more effective. Also, the Berserker class provides some passives that will help you manage your focus state better. So if you are going to play with heavy weapons, your aim should be to get focus as much as possible. An important note is that enemies can also enter focus, meaning that you won't be able to stagger them much and they will stagger you more. If you are an aggressive player, you just run into enemies and start hitting them with, uh, I don't know, your one hit sword, you might regret it because if you do not pay enough attention, enemies will enter focus and well, they will not care about your hits anymore, especially if you are going in with light weapons because you can barely stagger them at that point. Actually, about staggering in this game, I have noticed that it works in numbers of hits depending on the enemy type or your weapon type. For example, if you have a one end sword, and you're fighting a regular enemy, it seems like the regular enemy will get staggered after two hits. And if you attack them with a heavy weapon like the Great Sword, for example, then they will get staggered after one hit only, meaning that every hit of the Great Sword shall stagger them unless they enter focus. Now, if you are fighting a stronger enemy, like a larger enemy, for example, it seems like it takes double so four hits with a light weapon and maybe two hits with a heavy weapon of course like i said all of that can change because of the focus state now all of this leads me to talk about weapon types so weapon types in code vein while it seems like there are not that many because as we can see there are only five types of them it is very important to note that within each of them you will encounter some sub types for example, in this demo, the first real weapon you get is an axe. And even though there is no axe type in this game, this axe belongs to the hammer type weapon. This means that hammers will include axe like weapon, same for halberd, which has already been confirmed to include spears. Also, it is important to note that the moveset of each weapon will be adjusted to its shape, which is why the axe and the hammers have different moves in this game. The only issue now is that there are some weapon types obviously that won't be in this game. For example, dual blades, whips, or even gauntlets. But hey, the dev did mention that the dev did mention that they wanted to keep stuff for a future sequel. And I know that they added cool stuff like cool weapon in uh, every god either game as well. So they will probably do the same thing for this game. 
Anyways, like I said, weapons have different movesets, even though they belong to the same type, but they also have different traits. For example, the Lost Broadsword in this game and the Queen Slayer Blade are both one hand swords, but they are used in very different contexts. While the Queen Slayer Blade is way faster and has less value in your total weight because it is lighter and deals low damage, the Lost Broadsword, on the other hand, is the opposite, meaning you will want to use the Queen Slayer Blade with a build that favors attack speed, for example, and high mobility as well, and the Lost Broadsword in a build that is more of an all around build with normal mobility. So, if you are going to pick a weapon type, that you prefer make sure to know what specific weapon you want in that weapon type make sure to know the moveset of that weapon and what moves uh, actually interact very well with your build in the weapons you also have the blood veils which also have different types and different traits for example the ogre type blood veil has what feels like a medium charge time on its charge drain attack the drain attack itself allows you to travel a certain distance to hit enemies and the parry is what I would consider to be a normal parry. The combo drain is a fast upward sweep with the claw. The stinger type has a long charge time on the charge drain attack and the charge drain itself hits enemies from a certain distance while keeping you at a safe range but it can also hit through multiples and multiple enemies at the same time. The parry has some slow start up frames but longer active frames making the parry window very generous and the combo drain has a normal speed with hits slightly in front of you. The hunt type has a fast charge time and hits twice around you causing you to get stuck in a long animation however you can resist tagger. The parry has a fast start up frame and also has what I would say would be a more generous parry window than the ogre type for example. Personally, I think it is the best parry tool in the game. The combo drain is the exact same thing as the charge drain. Finally, we have the IV type which has an extremely long charge time but the charge drain attack is a dark vortex that appears around your character and that you can move around from a pretty good distance making very good to deal high damage when undetected. Tagged alongside the gift that increases charge drain attacks damage it can be the ultimate tool for long range assassinations the parry has very slow startup frames and a not so generous parry window in my opinion the parry uh, the combo drain has medium speed and can hit multiple enemies in front of you one last thing that i didn't mention is that your entire gear will consist of three things your main weapon not the secondary weapon by the way your blood veil and your class the three of them will affect both offense and defense stat and your total weight as well which is your mobility. Alright now let's talk about blood codes and gifts aka classes and abilities. These two systems will determine if you like or dislike the combat system of this game because without it your character is pretty much worthless. Well if you manage to play this game without them then you are a really big tryhard and a piece of trash that I will hate but I will also envy you because you are better than me at this game. Alright so before we go into very specific things I have to give you the big picture here. When it comes to classes and abilities think of something like I don't know something like Final Fantasy 14 where you can have all the classes on one character and share abilities between classes but you do not have to level them up individually. That is how it works in this game and like I said this game is very focused on the RPG side and not so much on the action side so do not treat abilities like moves you can use to initiate combo or end combos. Instead think of the conditions you are in before using them. Now explaining every classes and every gift or ability would take forever for me and so I have decided that it would be better to use some of my footage to show how some abilities work together and how they interact when they are mixed from different classes. Alright, this is my asset class. I was pretty happy with this character. It had some nice damage and nice mobility. 
Also, all of my characters were level 39 or 40 in this video. So, looking at my skill slot here, I have two fire magic abilities, two thunder abilities, two blood magic abilities, and then and then one poison buff for my weapon and a melee gift. Now, I didn't need the two last ones as a mage but I just had them because I thought they were cool so why not I'm also using the lost bayonet here and the night claw which is the auger type blood veil so there are two mage classes in this demo one is the asset and the other is the caster the difference between them is that the caster has less damage than the asset but offers a high mobility meanwhile the asset is very slow but deals way more damage. I picked the asset because my gear was pretty light anyways. So there was no point for me to pick a class with higher mobility unless I wanted to swap to a different weapon like a one hand sword for example or a halberd. For my passive gifts I had increased health and stamina, increased drain rating as well which is a stat that determines the amount of mana slash icor you get from melee attacks and also an increase for spells that belong to the dark tree yes that's another thing spells are separated in trees in this game light dark or skill light tree is support spells like buffs or interesting an interesting one was a big aoe called bloody impact i believe dark tree is for damaging projectiles which is what i currently have on my character and then you have skill tree for melee abilities overall this build i had was pretty good because it was able to deal damage in a very consistent way if i wasn't trying some ridiculous stuff as always i would have probably been able to go for a no hit run against the queen's knight next we have my prometheus aka the super fast ninja i believe that's why i want to call it at, at least um i didn't care much about my gear in this case uh, because I was playing on my Noctis cosplay. But this whole build consisted of stacking Adrenaline, Blade Dance and Venom Mark. Adrenaline increases my damage overall, Blade Dance increases my damage after every attack and Poison Mark, uh, I mean Venom Mark would build uh, the poison status effect on an enemy, even boss monsters. So all of that accompanied by the high speed of my Queen Slayer Blade would make this build very, very effective. Now if I had the Ogre type Blood Veil on my character, I could have had the Bloodborne Tash at all time because that would mean I ha that I had high mobility, but instead I went for a normal mobility with the Hound type Blood Veil on my character. However, I still had a way to increase my mobility with this character with a gift called Hasten. Um, I had some really crazy moments against the Blade Bearer using Hasten with her moving around constantly. It ended up pretty much with both of us jumping around everywhere so if you want a bit of speed in your gameplay this build should give you a good sample of what is to come finally we have the big boys build using heavy weapons with classes like fighter or berserker and once again the difference between both was the mobility fighter had less damage but normal mobility while the berserker had way more damage and really really slow mobility. Also, the Berserker had less options in terms of blood veils you could equip, so I preferred the fighters for that reason. Unfortunately, I happened not to record the good bits for this build and show you everything it was capable of, but I can quickly explain what's important. So there are two options here, you can either go for you can go for a tanky build that will rely on the focus system or you can go for a heavy hitter. Now expect to be really really slow with heavy weapons and keep in mind you can shorten your recovery frames by blocking right after an attack. You will also notice that you now have access to a few more mini gifts and how you are going to use each of these gifts can feel a bit weird at first but that is also because they are meant to be used in different ways. For example, Triple Annihilator, which is the first melee gift you get in this game. This ability overall is a pretty good ability in my opinion. It hits three times and you can turn around uh, with your character during the combo. However, your character doesn't move very much 
during that attack and you get stuck in a super long animation which can cause you to die or to take really really bad damage. Also, you also do not forget because enemies can enter focus you won't be able to stagger them immediately probably. So what is the purpose of Triple Annihilator? Well, it is a good move to clear a group of enemy, for example, or dealing damage in general to a boss that has been stunned and only if they are if they are stunned. So then again, I wouldn't recommend this move against bosses. Another ability is Dragon Launch. This ability is extremely powerful, but once again gets you stuck in an animation. However, it makes your character dash forward for a pretty good distance, so even if you miss at least, you have been moving around. By the way, the best friend of this move is going to be your special attack, meaning R1 plus square, because it knocks down enemies and pushes them away from you, and then you can use Dragon Launch to cover the distance. That combo is actually a guaranteed hit all the time. It is good against tough enemies, it is also good if a boss gets stunned and maybe you have some distance to cover before they get back up. So yeah. Next we also have Swallow Cutter which is a very quick attack for heavy weapons. Very convenient I would say. It deals good damage and has a knockdown potential. But then again in this case I didn't care about my build very much. But with the right build and the right buffs it can do a lot more. You can use it pretty much in time you get an opening. Aside of those three moves, you can use adrenaline to keep your damage up. Or uh, once again, go for a more defensive option like Royal Heart or Iron Will. But there's also one buff that is very important, especially if you want to deal damage, which is Blow of Madness. I think that's what it was called. Or was it Crazy Blow? I, I, I don't know. Anyways. So Blow of Madness will boost the damage of your next attack and personally I found it best to be used with Swallow Color. It is just unfortunate because I didn't happen to record uh, more footage with Swallow Color which is why from now on I have decided that I will try to stream and record at the same time more often. At least when the game comes out. Alright, we are reaching the end of this video but before that there are two more things that I need to explain. The first thing is about shield dead enemies. They are generally not much of a threat because you can easily backstab them. But if you happen to have some trouble with that, well, what you can do is to get close enough and then throw a projectile like Sonic Arrow for example and it should trigger the repost animation without having you getting staggered. Also, note that shield dead enemies can use shield bash moves and shield bash are pretty un uh, pretty much unblockable. If you try to block them, you will still get hit. Another thing is during boss fights, each boss has a phase during which you will deal less damage. For example, the animations that marks the start of the second phase of the Queen's Knight allows him to resist more of your damage. Uh, and at least until the end of that animation, you cannot deal that much damage to him. Same thing with the blade bearer at the very start of the fight. It is better to use uh, that opportunity to get some icor back with a charge drain attack or maybe a combo drain. Alright, so that's it for this video. I think I've talked about pretty much everything I know. It is a shame that I couldn't try everything during the network test. And I gotta admit that it is because I was, let's say, a bit too distracted with the character creation. They definitely didn't reveal all of the gifts in the blood code they gave us, and I know that for a fact. They also didn't reveal all of the classes, so yeah, just imagine how much fun this game would be when it comes out. Uh, at least for me, I know for a fact that I will have fun, I don't know about everyone else. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, thanks to those who posted their issues with the game in the previous video. I will definitely make a video about that, not the next video though, because the next one will be about changes that I think are 100% absolutely required for this game to be better. The issues will be more like a list that I will take from my comment section and maybe other videos comment section. So, 
that will be a different video anyways thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next video